Well, we're putting up high alpine weather stations here. Uh, this is uh, in the Fortress Mountain area, and uh, we're in the high country of the Kananaskis. And there are certainly some high altitude stations here that are operated by the province, but we wanted to supplement those so we can study this area intensively to see how the snow accumulates, see how runoff is formed, uh, see how much rain on snow events uh, occur, and also to give an added early warning for any future flooding. The floods that occurred this spring uh, showed us that you can't have too many measurements in the mountains of what's coming down. Uh, because it's, uh, the flood itself is very hard on the instruments. Some will break down, some stations won't survive. And so we want to have as much in the way of precipitation measurement as we can in the mountains. But there's beyond that, uh, beyond the floods, there are water supply is issues. The uh, Rockies are the primary water supply for the prairie provinces, for Alberta and to a great degree Saskatchewan. And the water even flows into Lake, uh, Lake Winnipeg. It's important for us because we're trying to develop better computer models that will simulate uh, the hydrology of the whole Rockies from the U.S. border right up into the Peace River country. And uh, this will help us predict water supply, droughts, eventually floods, and, uh, and also the impacts of climate change on water for the future. The purpose of flood forecasting is that you can issue the forecast for the flood before the evacuations begin. And, and that didn't happen in this case. There were high stream flow advisories, but the flood warnings actually came out uh, about six hours after uh, Canmore was starting to evacuate around Cougar Creek and, uh, and about nine hours before Canmore had started mitigation measures in the creek itself. So as, ideally you want that to come beforehand. For instance, the Highwood River, the uh, headwaters of that are just south of here. Uh, there were stations that were showing very, very heavy rainfall and, uh, and stream gauges showing uh, very, very high flows. Um, and the critical thing is to have those warnings out to the communities downstream and uh, follow through and uh, say, well, if you have a high stream flow warning for the high mountains, that's going to inevitably translate to the Bow River and to the uh, Highwood River and move its way down through and eventually to Medicine Hat. And so it was, uh, so there's a lot going on with, with the flood. It's very, very complex. And, uh, um, but certainly having earlier warnings would have allowed some better evacuations, safer evacuations, and also uh, some people could have dumped things. They could put up sandbags, things like this with more warnings. Well, I think warnings could have been issued Tuesday. Um, uh, Tuesday, it was, uh, by Tuesday morning, there was a forecast from Environment Canada of 150 millimeters of rainfall over the mountains. And given spring conditions for the snowpack, uh, fairly, it was slightly damper than normal spring. So soils are wet or still frozen because of the cold. So uh, you don't need to run a hydrological model to know that that's going to result in some sort of a flood. and. Uh, and so they, um, and of course, they, uh, the other risk of flood forecasting is that you issue a forecast and one doesn't occur. And you can't do that very often before people stop listening to them. So, so they, they always have to uh, run a balance uh, through these two. But anyway, the, um, uh, it's, it would have been beneficial if had a flood forecast on Tuesday when that rain forecast occurred.